Hello everyone. In this video, I will give a very brief introduction on how to work with SCAPS 1D program for your solar cell simulation. This will not be a very comprehensive video, rather I will focus on the very brief introduction from the very start to the very end, so that uh, the people who are planning to start working with SCAPS 1D program can have a brief idea or a mental setup what kind of um, things they are going to face with this program. So let's start it. I have planned this video in this way. First I will start SCAPS 1D program. Then I will load a predefined structure that is a structure that I have already worked with <coughs> and I have simulated it. And then I will give you a peek into the material parameters and I, for the convenience, I have classified the material parameters in two categories. The first one is primary parameters and the second one is secondary parameters. Uh, it is um, better to mention that this is strictly my, uh, my classification so that I can give you a better understanding of these parameters. Then I will move on to setting the simulation environment and last but not the least, we will run the program and check uh, the basic results. So let's start. First, running the SCAPS 1D program. SCAPS 1D program usually uh, doesn't have any um, shortcut, so you have to run it from the installed, uh, installed folder. So which is typically C drive. So let's go to C drive, then program files, then here we may have SCAPS. I have got a couple of versions. So I will today I will uh, work with 3307, which is the current version that is available to me. So 3307 and here is the executable file. So let's run it. So here it is being loaded. So this is the interface of SCAPS 3307. So this is our first step. Now let's move on to the second one. Now we will load up a structure in this um, program. But before uh, loading it, I would like to show which um, structure will be loading because then you will have a better idea of with which you are we are working with. So here, this is the structure with which we will be working. So this is basically a basic perovoskite solar cell, and it has been taken from one of our work. And this is the title of the paper. And this paper actually describes um, the intricate details of um, um, uh, SCAP simulation in a very comprehensive way. So you may check this work out for your uh, further work. So here is the structure where uh, there will be, of course, perovoskite layer, which is the main absorber layer. And to aid with the um, uh, carrier flow, there are two other layers. One is whole transport material for which we will be using nickel oxide and another one uh, will be aiding the transportation of electron and which is called electron transport material and for this purpose we will be using zinc oxide for uh, today's video and then there will be two other layers one is the front contact which is FTO or ITO and another one will be back contact which is silver or aluminum. And here, one thing is important that light will be coming through the uh, HTM structure into the uh, HTM layer into the structure. So let's load this structure into our scaps. So now to load this structure, what you have to do, you have to set the problem. Okay, now let's load it. So I have um, saved this uh, structure previously. So now I'm going to load loading it. Okay, so let's find out this structure. I guess it is not here. So we have to go another folder. So here, uh, one thing is important in SCAPS, if you uh, want to save uh, the structures, they will typically be saved as DEF file. So the structures are called definition file or DEF file. So DEF file, I think 
the DEF file where this structure is um, saved is this one. Oh yes. So now let's take have uh, let's take a look if this structure is matches with the structure that I have shown you from the paper. So let's contrast it. So first we are having the left contact which is the FTO and light is coming through this layer. So light is coming through this layer. Then we are having HTM and as I have already told you for HTM I am using nickel oxide. So here nickel oxide will be served as HTM. Then we are having perovskite layer. So we are having perovskite layer that is uh, CH3 and H3 PBI3. And then we are having ETM and as I have already told you for ETM I am using zinc oxide and lastly we'll have a back contact which is here. So this is our second step for our um, um, this video. So now we will move on to the third step that is we will have a peek into the material parameters that we need to give to complete this simulation. Okay. So let's start working with the material parameters and this is the most um, complicated step. So today I will just show you the material parameters uh, but the intricate details will be discussed in some other videos because this is the most tedious step that you will be fine uh, that you will be facing working with scabs. So first perovskite layer so this is the interface of material parameters and here as I have already told you I have um, separated these material parameters in two categories one is primary parameters and another one is secondary parameters so here this panel is for primary par material parameters where this, uh, you can see there are a couple of uh, material parameters that you need to provide to um, indicate that you are working with perovskite layer, your desired perovskite layer of course. So the first parameter should be thickness. Of course we have to give thickness of the layer and then there are a couple of electrical parameters. So from, from here up to this, these are the electrical parameters that we need to give. So there are um, the basic electrical parameters that is band gap, electron affinity, electron mobility, hole mobility and so forth. So um, uh, the details about these material parameters will be discussed in some other videos if uh, maybe. Now let's move on to the next parameter and the next parameter is the optical parameter. So that is uh, optical parameter is basically uh, the absorption pattern of this layer. So optical parameter again can be given in multiple ways. Uh, so again uh, we will um, not discuss it today rather we will put it from um, other videos or other time. So these are the primary parameters so let's make a summary. So we have to give thickness and then we have to give the electrical parameters and these parameters has to be collected in from different sources of course are very reliable sources and then we have to give uh, optical parameters and again and there will be different strategies to give these optical parameters. So these are the primary parameters. Now if we go to the secondary parameters, secondary parameters are those parameters that are, is not essential for the simulation because if we consider the layer to be perfect then these parameters are not needed. So if we want to consider the secondary effect of this uh, material, so the secondary effect in the cell then will be needed these parameters that is the recombination or the losses into the cell. So we have, we have to give radiative recombination, Auger recombination and the Shockley Ridholm uh, recombination that is the recombination which, uh, which occurs uh, due to defects, different kinds of defects. So these are the secondary parameters. Again, um, the details um, will be time consuming and it will uh, require some other videos to cover this. So these are the material parameters that you need to give while you are working uh, with scabs and this uh, material parameters are need to be given to specify each and every layer that we are specifying here. So these three layers 
for every layer you need to give all these parameters like you can see here we have not provided any uh, secondary parameters so now uh, let's move on to the rest two layers that is we are having two contacts one is left contact and another one is right contact if you have forgotten it let's have a contrasting view so here we have to give some material parameters for FTO and ITO and some material parameters from silver or aluminum so for contact layer uh, the primary parameter that you need to give is the work function. There are some other parameters, but um, for the time being, I'm considering um, this uh, unnecessary. So for right now, uh, the other param uh, parameters other than a work function will be considered as superfluous parameters. So here you will focus only on work function. Here, if we, you press flat band, then you are considering an ideal um, metal contact that is where there is no um, energy gap between the adjacent semiconducting layer. So here, if you uh, you just wanna uh, you you just uh, wanna uh, com uh, what can be said uh, if you wanna. Uh, reduce the complexity of the simulation then just click flat band and it will give you the ideal contact so here we have considered for the case of simplicity the flat bands again uh, there are some other parameters as you can see in the panel and uh, they have their own words and uh, they can be discussed in, in some other videos so now again for the right contact again we have uh, considered flat band so here we have considered that both of the front contact and back uh, back contacts are ideal contacts okay so this is our step number two uh, excuse me step number three that is uh, we have we now we know what type of material parameters that we need to give if uh, in the different layers so now let, we have move on to the very uh, fourth step and that fourth step is we have to set the simulation environment so the first thing is that you have to give light right so this is a solar cell without light it won't work so let's give light so here just select the light and when you are giving light then again the thing comes uh, what type of solar spectrum we will be using by default the program uses am 1.5 g spectrum uh, so but uh, if you need uh, any other spectrum even customized spectrum if you want to use uh, then scaps give you the opportunity to do that but for the time being we will consider that we'll be using uh, the default solar spectrum that is am 1.5 g so this is all about the light now let's move on to the simulation and today uh, we want we oh, just want to see the IV characteristic of this solar cell so another simulation environment that we have to set is the IV characteristic so if we want to see the IV characteristic we have to give the lower value of the simulation voltage than the upper value um, for perovskite I know the uh, open circuit voltage should be around um, uh, 1.1 volt so I'm setting it higher than this so I'm setting the higher value to 2.0 but I would like to see only the graph up to open circuit voltage I don't need to see the result um, beyond open circuit voltage so I am checking this um, um, box so if you uncheck it uh, then um, typically uh, the uh, uh, solar cell doesn't run properly just goes uh, it shows convergence error so don't forget to check this because uh, for who are working with solar cell typically doesn't need to see beyond um, um, open circuit voltage right so now this is the fourth step that is we have set the simulation environment and now last but not the least we will run the program and see the IV characteristic of the solar cell so are you ready to run it I guess you are so calculate single shot and see what happens all right the program is working all right so it has run so let's see what it is showing and of course 
Today we want to see only the IV characteristic of the solar cell. So let's go to the IV characteristic where it is here. It is the IV characteristic. Let's press it and see if we are having the desired IV characteristic. Voila. So this is our desired IV characteristic. So here you can see the open circuit voltage, which is around 1.05 volt. Then you are having the short circuit current that is around 24 milliampere per centimeter square. Then you are having the field factor of this pyrophosphate solar cell to be 75.48%. And the most important parameter, my structure is giving me around 19.30% efficiency. So this is the way how you can have the IV characteristic of a solar cell using SCAPS 1D simulation environment. So it's very plain and simple, isn't it? So just try it and trust me, you will love it. But of course, one thing is very much frustrating because um, I have shown you uh, the predefined structure, but when you are working with uh, your own structure, you will have a lot of challenges and uh, hopefully I'll be able to give you some details some other time. So that's all for now. Thank you very much.